Our final speaker in this block is Dinos Stram Stranomitis. I've been practicing this so much. Director and Chief Operating Officer at Sportsbook Provider Altener. Dinos is joining us today to tell us more about the practicalities of integrating a sportsbook service into one's product offering. Dinos, thank you very much for being here. Thank you, William. Thank you, thank you thank so you much for much. inviting us. Thank you, you have a very nice audience and you have a very nice auditorium. Thank you. Actually, and I would like maybe, because I made some presentation about sports betting and risk management and fixed games, but as a responsible citizen, I would recommend to you to change the name of your nice conference, make it Responsible Gaming in Holland. Because why I say that, I heard all morning and maybe half afternoon about limits, what to do, the big, all I say is any big elephant in the room is the Responsible Gaming. And I need to make a comment on that before we go to the boring presentation. So, I hear too many things, but I'll try to describe the situation with an example. As you probably understand from my long, unreadable name, I'm coming from Greece, and was about 2004, where we used to work with agents at that time, and somewhere in the Greek island, there is an agent having players good players, VIPs. We all know where the Greeks found the money that time. And I call, I see a 5,000 bet. I'm doing risk management, I am the trader. 5,000 bet comes in, does not matter what. Real Madrid, Barcelona, a VIP bet. And I call the agent, say, George, is this guy losing a lot of money? He told me, yes. Where does he find the money? I don't care. Say, George, what's his job? He's a postman. Really? So a postman can afford to have 5,000 bet. And we, as a risk management, we pretend that everything is fine? Say, George, tell him we don't accept his bet. It's a poor guy. Keep him aside. Say, no, no, Dinos, please. Get the bet. This is business. Yeah, but a business has a limit. Don't? Say, look, Dinos, if you don't get the bet, the guy will go opposite and will place the bet elsewhere. And if you continue like that, I will never tell you again what's the job of my customers. That's responsible gambling. It's risk management at the same time. You have? Okay. So, what's the conclusion? There is only one rule that, in my opinion, can fix the story. All these years, one rule. So, long term and one rule short term, long term, educate the society to drink less, to smoke less, to gamble less. Simple. Any other is just cockfighting who is more strong. That's it. And in this country, I appreciate that we can discuss directly there is only this rule, nothing else. Short-term rule. I hear about limits, many things, of course. I have another customer who is betting 30,000 a day. Because of GDPR, long story short, I call my customer and say, what's this job of this guy? Say, Dinos, is an owner of a shoe factory. He can buy your company, my company, and all your company at the same time. It's fine to have 30,000 bet. It's very fine. It's not a problem. Short-term rule, why are you asking my utility bill if I want to have an account? 
get my financial statement and ask me how much I want to lose. Everyone has a tax declaration. That's a simple rule, can fit in every country. How much you declare as a tax, as an income, if you lose 5 or 10 percent of that, it's OK. Solve the problem, short term. Anyway, going back to the risk management. Coming and talking about values again, it's all about concept. We say we do risk management. We safeguard the operator as a third party to make money. So our prime job is to make sure that we see all the customers and understand one thing only. Only one thing. What is the motivation of the player to have a bet? Why is logging in, depositing, and placing a bet in a real event? He has an information. He got a bonus and he wants to take money out of it. Is there a wrong starting time somewhere in Latin America and we are cheated? Or he just wants to have fun? Or he wants to have more fun? Or he is addicted? And this is our job. We do the risk management. This is our job to understand the motivation and how we work. There is a classic way, there is a modern way, and there is wishful thinking. The wishful thinking we call AI. It will come. As I heard the guy from Pentasia said, data science. My daughter is studying data science. This is the quickest way to get a data engineer these days. Anyway, going back, we're segmenting the customers. We are not changing the price that much of the game any longer. That was probably the end of 90s, beginning of 2000, maybe up 2010. It's not the case anymore. Real Madrid has a price. Juventus has another price. AX Amsterdam has a different price. Definitely, this price can change only if there is a particular local interest. I'll give you an example. Netherlands. They lost three World Cup finals. I'm pretty sure those days it was a nightmare for Dutch operators when that happened, because obviously all Dutch, or the majority of the Dutch, they bet on their team. Maybe for local reasons and for exposure, might necessary to change a bit the price there. That's it. Otherwise, you segment the customers. A VIP will get a better service, a higher stake. Don't disturb him. Especially nowadays, we have systems very easy. You can request any amount you like. You are a VIP. You have money. Why you have a limit of 50 euros? You can request 50,000 euros, and someone decides behind, ideally, the wishful thinking, a machine, at the moment, is a person. So segmenting the customers safeguard the profitability. At the same time, this is the audience or the team that they follow processes, and they can identify also the responsible gaming issues. This is how it works. So going back, maybe, say, that's regulation, that's regulation, say, Altenar, you provide sports, but yes, we do. You need to prove that you are not corrupted. What does it mean? We don't like fixed games. If we know that the game is fixed, we close it. Oh, you have to participate in certain bodies, and we do. We have to participate in certain bodies. 
when we say it does not take more than four or five bets to understand that something is wrong in a particular game. And you watch it. And you close it. And now we're reporting it. And we, there is an, a system of exchanging information behind. Because many people will say, ah, I will not have the sports because I'm scared that I will lose money if a game is fixed. That's not so easy anymore. There are too many things behind. I need to say. So it's all about us, how we can create a safe and secure environment that someone comes in and get what we call entertainment. And when you spend 20 euros to go to the cinema, or you spend 20 euros to go and place a bet in Feyenoord, you should get the kind of entertainment that worth for two hours. Maybe some people, they have bigger pocket, and they would like to have more entertainment, a bit more expensive. It's like how much it costs a bottle of wine. There is a wine for 20 euros, there is a wine for 200, even 2,000. Anyway, so this is a little bit the myth of fixed games. We all understand, don't run after bookmakers, don't run after sports betting providers. We have bigger issue if someone fix the games. We are the guys that we try to run after them, and we try to prevent corruption. And talking about sports betting in general, I would consider three topics. The first and more important, technical capability, capacity, scalability. If you want to have a third party provider, you have to make sure that they have the technical ability to provide a system that works up and running all the time. As I used to say, a CEO takes all decisions based on the fact that on Monday morning, he does not want to be informed for something bad happened during the weekend. He wants as less risk as possible. And then, I would say, the second part of a sports book that you have to consider, because I'm getting too many questions for that. I say, guys, you are very expensive. We are not. But in our operation, you need to understand that we need to have real-time information of what is happening in all stadiums in the world from Chile to Japan in two seconds, maximum. And then we're adding a couple of seconds more to give you the bet. And all these guys that we buy the data, trust me, you have to deal with a nightmare. Our competitors in the room may understand what I'm talking about. And then we're talking about quality of data. Because it's different data someone to watch on TV from Europe, what's happening in Asia, and different you have someone in the stadium who has a proper device allowed by the organizer to send you the transmission immediately. This is a whole science behind. And it costs. So don't get me wrong, but there is no in-house sports book, 100%. It's not possible. The worst case, you have someone in the stadium. And then you have to get all this together. And then you have to provide a nice system that allows your marketing to work properly. So what we try to do, because you see, for example, Bet Builder, etc. It's not about it only. It's Bet Builder is the buzzword of the, of the year, because you work this and that, and you can combine things. But more important, you have features. It's important to have 
bonus tool. Say, what's your strategy on bonuses? You need to provide the bonus tool with every option. These days, you have to give every option to every operator. You know, there is a trendy thing, that's an early payout. If a team is leading 2-0, pay. If it's become 2-2, it's OK. Don't worry. You pay the draw as well. So all this stuff we need to develop. And trust me, believe a sports betting company or sports betting provider, we have more technical and more developers than business people. Because it's not important or so, it's not difficult to have ideas what to do. But it's more important to have the people to convert what you want to do into reality. And as of today, the AI is still in the paper. It's getting space. In this industry, it's not necessary yet, but it will become necessity very soon. Ideally, in the future, when we have the first bet from someone who comes from Spain, when second time visit the website, give him Spanish relevant content. And if he plays a bet on cycling, apart from the Spanish relevant content, give him cycling content automatically. It's a personalization for every single user. Imagine what kind of system you need to have behind that to support it. Imagine the level of calculation that every single user should get different content. So all in all, my aim today was to give you a description about what is possible, what is risk management, how we work, and I'm very happy if you have any questions to answer to you. Again, at least we managed to get away a little bit from responsible gaming, even though you know, I had to make that comment and consider the name change. Thank you very much. Dion. No problem. Um, we still have a few minutes, so let's look at the questions from the room. If you have you've put something in Slido, you can also upvote questions from others. I managed to escape and survive without my notes so far. Very good. It's Very OK. Good. Let's see how we do with the question. Uh, how important, Tinos, is it for a sportsbook to offer streaming? Uh, so uh, streaming of uh, matches? I uh, was working in 2008 in a company that we were the first one to get, not the, maybe from the first ones, to be honest, not the first, to get streaming all over. It was that time something like 4 million euros deal a year. Does not make much difference, but it gives you credibility. In revenue, can barely add a little bit. What I would say, if you want to optimize it, get the content before 5 p.m for the people that they try to bet from the office. Counterproductive. That's a Greek style thing, eh? isn't it? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I think that answers the questions. Uh, do we have time for one more quick question? Uh, about the urine, is there a second question? If not? Looks like we are, ah, OK. We have Dinos, in your opinion, do you think that AI technology would replace unofficial data and TV trading? Ooh, that's, uh... Uh, I'm afraid not I wish to happen, to be honest. Uh, because more likely, what I heard from many that are working on the item is that they try to put even kind of sensors in the balls, in the shoes of players. So if you don't cooperate with official bodies that are organizing the event, the games, you're more likely you won't make it. But imagine a system that you have sensors in your shoes, you have sensors in the ball, and all this information transmitted more or less automatic. And the, you can call it AI, it does not really matter. The technology will give you this information anyway. So we will not escape from those things. Great. Dinos, thank you very much thank for your you. presentation. Thank you. I'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you.